Tonight, Assembly Republicans now calling for SUNY Brockport to cancel an event as controversy surrounds the host. Plus, a resurgence of COVID cases may be looming in New York with the spread of the new Omicron subvariant. And the death of 17-year-old Jordan Brooks may have not been fully investigated. The report uncovers. WTOP 10 Nightly News starts now. Good evening and welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm Jose Ramirez. And I'm Donna Basil. The New York State's Office of Children and Family Services are unco uncovering reports that the Oswego County's Department of Social Services did not fully investigate at least two claims of abuse made on behalf of a 17-year-old with cerebral palsy, Jordan Brooks, who died from suspected neglect back in May. After his death, a 14-page fatality report was published, giving an insight into what investigators saw before and after the child died from malnutrition and sepsis. The report outlines the Oswego County's DSS involvement after not fully investigating reports of child abuse and taking Jordan's mother, Lisa Waldron, word for some of the claims. Both Jordan's mother and stepfather are facing charges of criminal negligent homicide, manslaughter, and endangering the welfare of an incompetent or physically disabled person. The state's University of New York at Brockport plans to have Anthony Bottom speak at the school with strong opposition from Republicans. Anthony Bottom is convicted for the killing of two New York City police officers in 1971. SUNY Brockport refusing to cancel the controversial event, and today Republican Assembly members spoke up against this decision. him in cold blood as he begged for his life. Does that sound like a political prisoner to you? That sounds like a terrorist who used a bogus 911 call to lure two public servants, a diversified crew, and he took advantage of that opportunity to take their lives. The assembly members called on law enforcement officers to speak on behalf of Waverly Jones and Joseph Pagenti, who died that night. After new COVID-19 cases rise in Europe, one expert says now is the time to prepare in the States. Mandy Gaither has the latest. Mostly, we're not being alarmist about it. We're just transmitting the information as we get it. But the number one basic, the basic way to deal with this right now is if anyone feels symptoms at all, just get tested immediately. That's how we can stop it from spreading. You A growing share of sewage systems in the U.S. have detected increased levels of coronavirus in recent weeks, according to data released last week from the CDC. Governor ha Kathy Hochul saying that the Omicron subvariant is not yet a cause for concern. The new COVID-19 Omicron subvariant sub BA2 is showing up in testing in New York. Hochul says she is not sounding any alarms. She says the variant has not been spreading as fast here as in Europe or the UK. However, the state's health commissioner, Dr. Mary Bazette, says she can't promise there won't be an, another spike. We're not being alarmist about it. We're just transmitting the information as we get it. But the number one basic, the basic way to deal with this right now is if anyone feels symptoms at all, just get tested immediately. That's how we can stop it from spreading. You continues to surge, Oswego stays ready with a seven-day average of 22 new cases per day. New York State is warning residents to remain vigilant and beware of scammers while support, supporting Ukraine's scammers may design websites to mimic the, the official site of the legi legitimate charity to steal money or personal information from unsuspecting donors may re May request many recent scams include requests from cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. Governor Kathy Hochul says it's important that residents pay attention to where 
they are sending their money so it is donated to the right cause. Tonight, we're putting the spotlight on some campus groups and local businesses. The St. Baldrick Foundation has announced a fundraising event. PR Capstone, students Aja Memerovic, Pablo Leon, Angie Cordovez, and Carter Vengi have worked alongside the St. Baldrick's Foundation to host a fundraising event at the Ferris Wheel during karaoke night, 10 to 2 a.m. Wednesday, March 23rd. Join these students in helping conquer childhood cancer and come out and donate. For more information, please contact Ajam and via email. And now for our cutest story of the night, provided by our friends at the Humane Society, we have Cabbage the Cat. Cabbage is just as mischievous as she is friendly and outgoing. She gets along with all her human and furry friends. Cabbage is perfect for a playful and busy home. If you would like more info about Cabbage, you can contact info at oswegohumane.org. Coming up later tonight, a look into the Supreme Court nominee, Kansaji Brown Jackson, on her second day of questioning. And how Disney employees are responding to their CEO's response on the Don't Say Gay Bill. Now let's take a quick look at the weather with storm meteorologist David Rint. Hey everybody, I am outside the Murano Center right now. There's not too many stars out and it is still a bit cold, uh, but let's take a look at the headlines. Spring has officially started, but we can still expect some storms coming in this week. Uh, and to finish, or to start the weekend, we can also see some storm. So stick around after the break for my full forecast inside. Athletic, Aaron, there are six big points. This is the one you've been waiting for. This group has never beaten Cortland. Getting started with some men's soccer as the Lakers had two conference match over half of the Lakers goals this entire season. Offense what? is key. You talked all about scoring goals. Good evening and welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. For the governor race with a strong lead, former Governor Andrew Cuomo is... Barlow announced the completion of a large building mural in downtown Oswego. The renovations on the Hewitt Union Building, turning it into the new Hewitt Hall. And as we move into tomorrow, that rain is going to be in our area. Moving to the Diamond now, a sweet Caroline got a lot sweeter last night. Life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire, but you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. We've been marinating chicken in all sorts of liquids for 24 hours. vitamins and minerals and things that you need, nutrients. The oh, chicken speedy is a staple of our it's culture. It's hey everybody, welcome back. I am luckily inside the warm studio. Let's take a look at the satellite for right now. Uh, it's pretty calm over Oswego, but if we just take a bit look over here, we can see this storm system, which will be moving in for the next uh, day or two. We can expect to see that Thursday, uh, but I will get into that. Here's the uh, sat or the radar. Like I was saying, Oswego is pretty calm right now. Uh, a bit of rain up in the north, but not too much to know over Oswego. Uh, tonight, like I said, calm, uh, pretty low winds, cold temperatures though. I can. I can uh, vouch for that. Mostly cloudy, though, with some uh, east winds, like I said. Tomorrow, though, we can expect to see some calm skies and clear skies uh, for the early days until the late evening, 
where we'll be seeing these showers moving in with that storm, for, storm system moving up. Uh, so this is the precipitation for Tuesday. Tuesday is going to peak around early morning, really early morning, around 2 a.m. But around uh, morning, it should settle off into 50% chance of clouds and snow. And then it should stay level until Friday. Uh, we'll also be seeing that rain. Uh, so yeah, lots of rain, like I said. That's just something you have to expect uh, for this spring. Looking into the start of the weekend, however, that's when we'll see some snow forming. Uh, you can expect to see that peaking around Sunday into a bit of Monday, with Tuesday being a bit nicer. Temperatures are uh, ranging pretty at, or, uh, ranging pretty normally. You've got a low of 30 on Monday, but t Thursday should look really nice despite the rain. So if you have an umbrella, maybe you could go splash in some puddles, have a bit of fun out there. Uh, stick around uh, back to the desk. We're going to toss back to the desk for the full Marwood News. Supreme Court nominee Kansaji Brown Jackson in face, faces intense questioning that lasted hours from s senators on Tuesday during the second day of her confirmation here. Judicial philosophy and a focus on her record as a public defender. It was all part of an intense day of questioning for President Joe Biden's Supreme Court nominee, Katanji Brown Jackson. When I get a case, I ensure that I am proceeding from a position of neutrality. Jackson responded to criticism from Senate Republicans that she had so far been vague about her judicial philosophy. It's very important that judges rule without fear or favor. Republicans focused on some of her work as a federal public defender. Now let's talk about being a public defender. Did you consider that rewarding? Senator, yes, um, I did, because public service is very important to me. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham was critical of the process so far, and he suggested there is a double standard when it comes to confirmation hearings. If you're an African-American conservative woman, you're fair game to have your life turned upside down. If you express your faith as a conservative, all of a sudden you're an effing nut, and we're tired of it. Judge Brown is expected back on the Hill Wednesday for a second day of questioning. I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. Judge Brown is the first black woman nominated to the Supreme Court, making her confirmation hearing a historic one. As the war in Ukraine continues, analysts have claimed President Putin of Russia has been growing increasingly frustrated due to the, due to the stalemate in Ukraine. Four weeks into the war, Russian forces have yet to capture Kiev, while Ukraine forces have recaptured some cities previously held by the Russians. There is a growing fear the war itself will escalate into a nuclear war. But it's President Putin who has put the nuclear card on the table. Can you tell me and tell the world whether you believe President Putin is trying to scare the rest of the world and Ukraine by mentioning the nuclear option. Can you tell me that? And can you tell me that he would never use a nuclear weapon? Uh, two things. I would uh, disagree with you. Firstly, President Putin was not the one who ruined Minsk Accords. Okay. That was, that was Ukrainian side. This is number one. Number two, uh, Ukrainian, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, handed in all the nuclear weapons uh, to the Russian Federation. But unfortunately, in the year of 2022, just a couple of months ago, in Munich conference, President Zelensky started to speak about possibility of generating a nuclear arms on the territory of Ukraine. And most probably... Russian officials say they will not back down and will only use nuclear weapons if, quote, existence were threatened, end quote. American businesses on high alert as fears mount of a Russian cyber attack hitting the U.S. Meanwhile, the fight in Ukraine rages on. Chris Newton reports. U
Disney employees stage a walkout in protest of the company's response to Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill. Earlier this month, Do Bob Chapek, Disney's CEO, spoke on the bill to employees but refused to publicly and directly condemn it, and instead said Disney will continue to tell diverse stories. Chapek's attempt to dodge politics led to a forced apology and an organized walkout of Disney employees. When we return, we'll take a look at the latest consumer trends. This job looks perfect. It says you need a high school diploma. You've got one of those, right? Skip the drama. Get your diploma. I got that. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Major Discussions is the new show that explores the stories of students here, right here on campus. I personally came here to SUNY Oswego for the broadcasting program because I love to hear people's stories and to do work just like this. Welcome back to WTUP 10 Nightly News. Let's get into your consumer reports for the night. 40% of Americans have reported that they are just as likely to go on a cruise now as they were before COVID-19 surges. In a survey from AAA, 41% of people reported that they are considering taking a cruise in, in the future. Millennials are even more eager at 52%. Travel booking dates from AAA showed that the bookings for cruises matching are matching pre-pandemic level, uh, levels. With gas prices rising dramatically, thieves and criminals are starting to become more creative and dangerous. Criminals have resorted to stealing gas directly from cars, trucks, and gas stations themselves. Security footage in Texas has captured a van parking on top of an underground fuel tank and drilling directly into the tank. Dealership owner Mike Gross has also experienced this crime when thieves drilled directly into a trade-in. There was a pretty strong order of gasoline. They smelled it before they saw it. As soon as you put it in the air, uh, everybody could see that somebody had actually drilled a hole into the fuel tank. Right here is where he was able to... Gas prices around Oswego County saw an $0.08 cent decrease this past week despite rising prices around the country. The White House has considered sending gas cards to families in order to help offset high gas prices. However, it decided that it is not feasible source familiar with the administration thinking, thinking said the Biden administration is worried gas cards won't work because of execution issue and fraud concerns. The source also said that in the past cards were stolen out of mailboxes. They are studying the pros and cons of various other proposals to help Americans. The Environmental Con Conservation Committee of the New York State Assembly voted on a bill that would ban proof-of-work cryptocurrency mining for two years. The bill was put together under the help of the state's Climate Leadership and Com Community Protection Act which mandates the state's greenhouse gas emissions be cut 85% and net emissions cut to zero by 2050. 
Legislation still need approval from the entire State Assembly and Senate to then be signed into law by Governor Hochul. Fruit Fresh Up has voluntary, voluntarily recalled all their fresh cut fruit products and vegetable products along with their ready to eat dips processed from their depot production facilities due to possible listeria contam contamination. Wegmans has issued a similar recall of their food. You feel good about brand. And uh, can cause serious and sometimes fatal infection for children, the elderly, and those with compromised immune systems. Parents shopping for baby formula may be noticing empty shelves after a recall of baby formula from the Abbott Nutrition Manufacturing Plant in Michigan with a history of safety violations and several illnesses against the company. It wasn't until a baby died that they issued a recall on the product. The FDA expected, inspected the plant back in September, but didn't warn consumers until a fo follow-up inspection last month. Coming up in sports, Hunter Truman. Hunter, could you give us a quick preview? Yes, I can. Both the Oswego softball and men's lacrosse teams took to the field this past week, and I'll let you know how they did when we come right back on WTOP 10 Nightly News. We've been marinating chicken in all sorts of liquids for 24 hours. These are vitamins and minerals and things that you need, nutrients. The chicken speedy is a staple of is our culture. bike donating it to goodwill may be the most incredible of all goodwill donate stuff create jobs good evening and welcome to wtop 10 nightly news for the governor race with a strong lead former governor andrew cuomo is barlow announced the completion of a large building mural in downtown oswego the renovations on the hewitt union building turning it into the new hewitt hall and as we move into tomorrow that rain is going to be in our area moving to the diamond now sweet caroline got a lot sweeter last night Welcome back to WTOP Nightly News. I'm Hunter Truman with your sports report. Starting off with some softball, Oswego headed to Houghton to take on the Highlanders earlier today for a doubleheader. The first game was a tight one with six scoreless innings between the two teams. However, Taylor Du Bois hit in a sacrifice fly that would end up being the only run of the ball game. This along with another stelling pitching performance from Fiona Higgins gave the Lakers the first game one to nothing. Second game wouldn't go so well for Oswego as Houghton went on to win 4-1 with two of the Highlanders' runs coming from Kristen Keller. The Lakers softball team sits at 2-7 on the season after the split. Moving from the Diamond to men's lacrosse, the Lakers picked up a big win this past Saturday against Cayuca College. Oswego absolutely dominated in this one with big contributions from Gavin Easton and Weston Gray, both combining for seven goals on the afternoon. Oswego, like they had done so far this season, started off hot leading the game 10-0 and not allowing a score until 8:22 left in the second quarter. Oswego would continue to pour it on throughout the rest of the contest, scoring nine more goals and claiming victory 19-14. Oswego moves to 4-2 on the season and are set to face off against Utica College here at home on Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Let's move to some off-season NFL trade and free agent news, with one of the bigger teams making a splash this past week being the Buffalo Bills. 
This includes signing two-time Super Bowl champion and Super Bowl MVP linebacker Von Miller to a six-year contract. Another notable trade being for backup quarterback Case Keenum. To finally reunite with Stefan Diggs after their miracle of a 2017 season while they were both on the Vikings. Finally, another big name signed this week was Jameson Crowder, who will move on from another New York team in the Jets up to Buffalo and will look to keep his production high in the slot receiver position after the Bills released receiver Cole Beasley on Thursday. Moving down to New York City, while the Yankees were preparing for opening day on April 7th, big news about the team from 2017 dropped yesterday. A letter written by Commissioner Rob Manfred detailed the sign-stealing tactics are set to be made public after a failed appeal from the team. It was already known that New York had improperly used dugout phones during the 2017 season. However, it is said that the letter may reveal more findings and methods used by the team than what was initially thought. The document won't be made public for another two weeks. Only then will the full scope of the investigation be revealed. From the Bronx to Barclays Center in Brooklyn, a big interleague showdown between the Utah Jazz and the Brooklyn Nets. So as we start late in the second quarter, as we see Kevin Durant and Mitchell getting together, dapping each other up, we get here into the second quarter. Donovan Mitchell dribbling around, takes a three and hits it. Utah leading 42 to 38. A couple minutes later, Mitchell gets the ball again and drives under the basket for two. He goes up, over, and back up again. Midway through the third, Kevin Durant began to take control, putting up and hitting a mid-range shot, passing Jerry West for 22nd all-time in points scored in the NBA, giving the Nets an eight-point lead. Durant, though, was not finished. He puts up a lob for Nick Claxton, who puts down the slam. Perfect up by Durant in a two-handed bucket grab from Claxton. Durant not cooling down takes a three here and hits it for a 16-point lead for the Nets. Utah trying to mount the comeback inside to Gobert, and he gets it to the basket, cutting it to 10. Gobert once again getting inside and crushing it through with 139 left as Gobert celebrates there, but Durant would not have it as he throws up, as he dribbles through another lob for Claxton, who puts the game away. Almost identical play as earlier, but believe me, it is a different highlight. The Nets keep their spot in the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference with the win, and the Jazz stay put at the four seed. But the Mavericks are closing in on their spot in the West. Thank you, Hunter. That's our report for tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for Sports Talk. Thank you for watching. Have a great night, everyone. This is the one you've been waiting for. This group has never beaten Cortland. Getting started with some men's soccer as the Lakers had two conference matchups for half of the Lakers' goals this entire season. Offense what? is key. You talked all about scoring goals. Welcome to understood.org, a free online resource for parents of kids with learning and attention issues with personalized recommendations, tools, and daily access to experts to help your child thrive. Understood.org, because understanding is everything.